This episode is proudly supported by Open Table. Nearly one third of diners are booking same day. So they're making those decisions on the spot. And 10% are, do- are making their bookings within just a few hours. And so it's why it's so important to have you know, booking software like Open Table, which allows your diners to discover you. And so when restaurants are on platforms like Open Table, they're much more likely to be discovered. We help diners to connect to restaurants. Ultimately, having technology, using technology, helps you to reattach to those diners. Experience the power of Open Table. For an exclusive offer, visit restaurant.opentable.com.au forward slash DITW. I, I can see it being a, a whole industry with, with divers around the country. I mean, it is such a great method. You just, yeah, you, you're seeing the fish, you're, you're choosing and selecting it before you shoot it, so you don't get better, really. This is Fish Tales, a seafood podcast. I'm John Sussman. For four and a half million years, early hominids survived on a plant-based diet. Around two and a half million years ago, one of our ancestors got the idea to impale another terrestrial mammal with a sharp-edged tool. Not too long later, relatively speaking, another bright ancestor got another idea to use a fashion spear to hunt for fish in Lake Gube on the western edge of the Sea of Aden. Around the same time, spearfishing with barbed poles or harpoons was becoming widespread in southern France. These early catches of sea creatures by spear set in train man's quest for a selective and potent means of harvesting marine protein. Although surpassed as a commercial means of harvesting by more industrial fishing methods, spearfishing is having a renaissance of appreciation as a means to sustainably catch fish. Spearfishing is highly selective, normally uses no bait and has no bycatch. Spearfishing is a passion of Tim Barnett the owner and founder of New Zealand commercial fishing operation Ocean Speared. This family-owned and operated business combines Tim's experience both in the commercial diving industry and as a passionate recreational spearfisherman. To be spearing fish for a job is a dream come true for Tim. He is excited to be at the forefront of this new harvesting method in New Zealand commercial fishing. Yes, I'm Tim Barnett. Uh, I live in the top of the South Island, a place called Nelson. Uh, fish Marlborough mainly, but I've, I've fished around the country. But yeah, where I'm currently based is, is Nelson Marlborough area. Going down and camping at a beach when I was well under five, probably, yeah, four, four year old or something like that. That's probably one of my earliest memories. But having my uncles and dad row out in a little dinghy with a fishing net, um, catching butterfish, mokey, things like that. So spear fishing wise, I was, I was also pretty young, probably seven years old. And I remember um, I just I just got some snorkeling gear and dad found a, a rock pool with a bit of a fish swimming around in it that had no escape. And uh, I had a Hawaiian sling. So I got in there and had several goes and eventually got the fish. So we took that home proud as punch and cooked it. And uh, yeah, that's that's my earliest spearfishing memory. I guess I've always had a love for the sea. Uh, the family on my mother's side were, were divers, were fishermen as well. So um, I sort of had that in the back of me for a start. But um, passionate spearfisherman. I, I travelled the world as well for a couple of years on an OE and took took my spearfishing gear with me. Uh, it was one of those things that was easier to travel with spearfishing equipment than it was with a rifle. I'm also a hunter. Um, and it was free overseas, whereas a lot of hunting wasn't. So I took my spear guns with me. So I got a lot of experience over there. And, yeah, just loved it. So passionate spearfisherman. It's always been there. I've been a commercial power diver slash kinna diver several other things uh for 20 years since i was 20 um but yeah the the spearfishing's always been there as one of my top passions so yeah it's great to be able to sort of integrate that into my work now having traveled the world pursuing a passionate hobby in spearfishing tim determined that not only was it something he loved doing but it seemed to be a great way to develop a specialized and targeted fishery Working with government authorities to develop a new fishery requires confidence, patience, and resilience. For Tim, this was a process of identifying a species which could prove the scope of the fishery without imposing disruption to any existing commercial operations. Yeah, so so up until now, it's been illegal to spearfish in New Zealand and sell commercially. So, uh, yeah, I always thought that that was a bit ridiculous. I mean, it's such a good method, um, spearfishing very selective, uh, the most selective method, really. So, um, 
a, a mate of mine and I over a couple of beers, we uh, yeah sort of had a bit of a discussion and came up with the idea and, and from that we approached MPI for a special permit to uh, see if we could get the method changed and uh, yeah, lucky for us, they jumped on it. So we've all gone from there. So we're allowed on our special permit uh, to spear butterfish in the South Island at the moment. So that's the the prob yeah. So that's where they've been having issues with bycatch in the past. So as an alternative method, being so selective spear fishing, um, MPI has given us this trial to to have a crack at it. So we're allowed butterfish and banded wrasse, but the uh, the banded wrasse don't seem so popular. So butterfish is a uh, seaweed eating fish uh, I'd, say, I'd say you call it a vegetarian fish um, so quite unique there's not a lot of vegetarian fish around the world so um, they feed on kelp up and down our coastlines they're predominantly the bottom of the North Island and the entire South Island uh, anywhere where there's weed found so yeah neat neat fish great table fish they're um, yeah quite quite an electric sort of blue colour to them especially in the males and uh they're also called green bones so when you fill at them the bones have got a a taint to them it's almost a bluey greeny sort of color so that comes from the seaweed apparently um that they eat so yeah green bone or butterfish that's what we're allowed to spare the Marlborough sounds are an extensive network of sea drowned valleys at the northern end of the south island of new zealand the main channels of the Marlborough sounds have calm water and are popular for recreational diving and fishing. Cook Strait, however, is infamous for its strong currents and rough waters. Because of this, a day's work can be as varied as the weather this unique stretch of water can offer. A long day of travelling to and from the fishing grounds with six or seven hours underwater is no deterrent for Tim and his team. Marlborough Sounds has got two main areas uh, that we can fish depending on the predominant wind at the time. So Derville Island, uh, that's that's a pretty cool sort of area. It's one of my favourite areas in the country to dive. Sort of a, a little bit further out, long travel from home. It takes me three hours to drive and another dry hour, hour in the boat to get there. So, um, But yeah, a little bit of farmland, but sort of windswept, yeah, you get some reasonable seas in there. So Cook, Cook Strait, the other place that we dive is, yeah, you get the big southerly swells through there. So the coastline's sort of been hammered quite a bit from the swells, but there's there's a lot of weed, uh, a lot of lot of water flow, so a very healthy sort of ecosystem there. Plenty of weed and, um, yeah, just a good area to dive, really. It's a typical day, fairly early start. I get up at four in the morning, uh, head over to Marlborough, either up Derville or out Cook Strait. Um, so it's about three hours travel by vehicle and then uh, an hour roughly in the boat and then we get to our grounds. We, we fish for six, seven hours in the water and then we turn around and head home as well. So typically I'll get home to my place after unloading the fish 11 o'clock at night, sometimes 12, even later. Typically, a fishmonger opportunistically buys seafood when and where he can, then sets about offering it for sale to buyers. The concept of soliciting orders from customers before setting about hunting for them is as opposite model to the traditional buy-sell process as can be found in the world of seafood supply. Depending on how many orders we've got, we're selling direct to restaurants. So uh, we take our orders. If we've got big orders, I'll chuck on another diver. But um, typically it's one to two divers in a day. Uh, me and one other or, um, yeah, sometimes two, two mates come out. Uh, so we'll typically head out onto the water, sort of jump in and just start spearing and we'll spear through the day till we've got our orders, catch a little bit more to make sure and then, yeah, head on home. But we uh, we spear the fish, so each fish once we see it is selected, uh, we choose to spear that fish, then we spear it, uh, we icky it, so kill it immediately and we bleed it out so that gets the blood out so we've got top quality fillets. Uh, after shooting a dozen odd fish, the deckhand comes around and we, we pass the fish on to the boat and he will gut the fish, wash them, put them into a nice slurry and then pack them down onto ice for us. So, yeah, within within an hour of being speared, they're packed down on ice. So it's a great model. It means that we, uh, yeah, we're not hammering the resource. We're getting a high price for the majority of our fish um, and, yeah, dealing directly with a customer. It's quite awesome having that connect now too with the end customer. I mean, I, all the fishing I've done in my younger years, you ha you were disconnected. You didn't really see the end user at all now, whereas now I'm, I'm dealing with chefs. I'm talking to them weekly. I'm going in to catch up with them, have a beer. And, yeah, it's, it's awesome having that connection. It's something that we've lost in most fishing in New Zealand. 
Tim's catch and delivery to order is an alternative business model for selling fresh, locally sourced seafood. It provides Tim the opportunity to directly engage with the chef and restaurant community in the most transparent seafood supply system with a minimised and illuminated chain of custody. Being able to enjoy the fruits of work as a diner in his customers' restaurants is an added bonus. So we've got a couple of restaurants up in Auckland, Ahi and Lodge Bar, but uh, we've got some great restaurants in uh, the South Island. Um, Amersfield down south are doing great things. We've got um, Harvest over in Blenheim and Arbour. Um, I've got Farakaha Luxury Lodge up in Wairapa. Um, they're doing great things with our fish as well, and and several more. I got my got my little guys in Nelson here as well. So um, Roots Bar over in Takika, they're one of my favourite watering holes when I'm working over there. So uh, it's it's awesome having the fish on the menu in there. So I'll be sitting down, uh, yeah, having a couple of beers, and people are eating my fish around me. So that, that that's quite fun. Great relationship with them, and yeah, the guys at the boat shed and. Harbour Light and uh, Urban Parts of Service in Nelson. Yeah, great great sort of teams and, yeah, it's, it's awesome to pop in at times. One of the biggest things they comment is the freshness. Um, it's it's unbeatable, really. We're sparing on a, any given day and uh, it's shipped to them the very next morning. So most restaurants close to us get their, uh, their fish the next, next morning, whereas um, the furthest away ones up in Auckland, they'll get theirs the following day. So... Uh, but the, the quality is exceptional. Like as it's been bled, it's been ickied and, and gutted in nice slurred. Um, that's that's their biggest comment. Just yeah, wow. The, the, they struggle to find fish as fresh as what I supply. So yeah, it's it's great getting that feedback and um, yeah, reassuring. Fishing from a boat can be an arduous and often dangerous job. Spear fishing, you may encounter a variety of dangers, including shallow water blackout, heavy seas, strong currents jellyfish, risk of drowning as a result of line tangles, and of course, sharks. By its very nature, spearfishing is an extreme sport, and whilst few activities can rival the excitement and thrill of landing a quality fish, for a commercial diver, these risks are above and beyond those typically associated with a day at the office. Probably my favourite all-time moment was when uh, I was power diving and a, and a great white swam up to me. I mean, the the whites are the apex predator, um, something amazing to see. I, I was lucky it was clean water. And, um, yeah, I, I was sort of in control to a certain degree. It, it was nice and calm and quiet cruising around, so I got a really good look at it. Um, it's one of those things that you want to see but you don't want to see. Yeah, we were almost expecting one, to be honest. Um, they've been seen there a lot. So, and, and my mate who was outside me saw it first. So he, he came flying past me for the boat. Um, so I, I kind of knew I didn't get the fright of first seeing it. I knew it was there and uh, went for a look. And um, oh, it, was, it, was, it was just one of those things. It's an amazing experience. I got really close to it, probably two metres. We were swimming alongside each other. Um, I just had a hook in my hand, one of the power hooks that we used at the time. And... Um, yeah, I was sort of thinking I'd whack it on the nose if it got too close. But yeah, luckily for me, it was just sort of cruisy and, and checking me out while I was checking it out. So. Sustainability of New Zealand fish stocks is ensured through a world-leading quota management system that controls harvest levels for each fish species and area. In 2019, New Zealand received the highest possible rating for ecologically sustainable management of its fisheries, was ranked amongst 60 fishing nations for managing marine resources, placed first out of 41 countries for the quality of its fisheries monitoring, and is regularly rated amongst the best performing nations for healthy fish stocks. With unique geographic and climatic attributes, New Zealand fisheries are an envy to much of the world. Look, I've, I've dived all around the world now, so um, and we are incredibly lucky in New Zealand with the fish numbers that we have. I guess the quota management system, although it's got its issues, um, has been working to a certain degree to keep the, uh, the the stocks at a reasonable level. You definitely see it complete, compared to places like the Mediterranean and uh, yeah, certain other countries as well have had a bit of a hammering. So it's, it's nice to see the volume of fish here. It's, it's a wild coastline, a lot of what we've got here too. So... Um, it is it is hard work out in the out in the Cook Strait, especially we've got a current comes from down south, so uh, ten eleven degrees it gets down around that uh, for for part of the winter. Um, in the summer in the Cook Strait at only fifteen sixteen degrees, so it never never really raises up much there. Where we dive at Durval Island, it gets up to twenty twenty one degrees, so it's sort of balmy up there. But um, I actually wear a nine mil top half wetsuit and a seven mil bottom for the majority of the winter. So, uh, yeah, you buy, you buy a nice new wetsuit at the start of the year and 
you're normally pretty toasty, and by the time summer comes around, you, uh, yeah, you're using your old suit, and it's it's still warm enough. So, media can be defined very broadly as that which connects humanity, but food media focuses specifically on well, food. Food media is certainly having a moment. And it's not only the rock star chef of reality cooking shows that are capturing the imagination of the hungry foodie. Yeah, so I'm also involved in a spearfishing TV show called South Seas Spearow. And that's an offshot of a another hunting TV program that I'm a part of, the Hunters Club. So basically, we had the Hunters Club that was very successful. It's in its seventh season now. And we I started sneaking some spearfishing into it. Basically, spearfishing is underwater hunting. And it was very well received. So on, on the back of that, we decided to start up a spearfishing show on its own. And uh, yeah, well received, very well received. The, the demographic we can target is, is quite broad. We've got um, wives and kids and and dads all sitting down together enjoying it. So, yeah, it's it's got quite a bit of reach, and we're hoping it just grows. We've done our second season now. We actually featured um, Ocean Speared and that, so there's there's a good 10-minute segment this year, and that showcasing exactly what we do. So it's, it's quite a handy wee thing. I can I can put my chefs onto that and say, hey, if you if you want an in-depth look at what we do, this is, this is on this episode. So it's sort of lucky being able to do my dream – like things that are things that I always used to do for fun, just as work. So, yeah, it's, it's been a great journey. It's awesome. The beauty of spearfishing as a commercial method is that the diver is viewing and selecting each fish before the trigger is pulled. This ethical method not only ensures there is no bycatch, it also means undersized fish are not targeted. Fish stocks are healthier and sustainable as the catch is spread along the coastline, ensuring no area gets overfished. Tim's hard work in developing an exciting new fishery is showing promise. What comes next? Whilst challenging and uncertain could become the next generation of engaging catches with cooks in a sustainable, premium quality manner. As the global resource of wild seafood becomes more precious, innovative ways to capture and maximise the value of every fish harvested is an imperative. Well, I'm, I'm really hoping that we get other species. At the moment, if, if we stick to butterfish, I could step it up to a couple of days a week. Uh, but not much more than that. So if, if it expands into other species, then we can be doing three, four days a week supplying different fish to, fish to restaurants. So that's the ultimate dream, really. If we can get those other species on, then it, it also makes the day more economical while you're out there. I mean, there's often a dive that you, you dive down and you don't see a butterfish, but you see a, a nice fat blue cod or a trevally or terrakee or something like that. So it would be great to be able to target those species as well. Just, yeah, get a bit more out of the day. I could see it being a, a whole industry with, with divers around the country. I mean, it is such a great method. You just, yeah, you're, you're seeing the fish, you're, you're choosing and selecting it before you shoot it. So you don't get better, really. I'm just, it's got me really excited now that we're we're breaking ground with the, the spear fishing and changing the method there. I'd, I'd love to look at more ways that inshore fishing happens and, and whether we can make changes there. Uh, there's a lot of space in the live fish market as well. So um, once I've got, Ocean speed fully established, and in a couple of days a week we're we're taken into a well. Then, yeah, that's going to be another another exciting thing I'm doing, just branching into other methods and seeing how we can improve improve those. So. It's just an awesome place to work, really. I, I, I've worked eight or five jobs before, and I just oh, it drove me nuts. Whereas this is out on the water, out in a place where most people go to have fun, and yeah, well, that's that's our workplace. So I, I take out one of one of the things I do as well recently is is taking some of the chefs that we serve out on the boat to show them. So yeah, big eye opener for those guys, and also for me, like uh, people just being blown away with the with the work environment that we have and the lifestyle that we have. So we're, we're lucky, really, with the lifestyle we can have, and and having fishing and diving as an industry. This is Fish Tales, a seafood podcast. A Deep in the Weeds production, I'm John Sussman. Follow us on Instagram at Fishtails Seafood Podcast or email us at fishtailspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay tuned for more tales from beneath the surface of the seafood world every Friday on your podcast app.